What is up, Cratics? Welcome back to the series where I build popular movies slash TV show vehicles using cars in GTA Online. Remember to let me know down below in the comments what movie slash TV show car you want to see me customize next, and I'll display the most liked vehicle suggestion comment in the next build video. Now again guys, remember that I will be making a separate series for the Fast and Furious cars, so again, this movie slash TV show series is for the other popular movie vehicles. So in today's video, we're going to be building the 1972 Dodge Challenger from the movie Nobody, starring Bob Odenkirk. In short, it's kind of similar to John Wick, but with Bob instead of Keanu. A pretty good movie, and honestly a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Now the vehicle we're going to be using for this build is obviously the Bravado Gauntlet Classic, which is perfect because this car is based on the first generation Dodge Challenger and even has a grill upgrade to get us closer to the 1972 look. The Gauntlet Classic can be found on the Sever San Andreas website for a normal price of about 600000 or a trade price of about 460000 and honestly, with the customization and detail it has, I think it's well worth its price tag. But anyways, let's go ahead and start the build for the Dodge Challenger from Nobody. Alright, Nobody movie build, let's do it. Alright, so obviously we're going to skip Anything over the Gauntlet Classic custom upgrade because that converts it into like the... Charger Daytona, like the Plymouth Superbird, which is what we don't want. We want the Challenger look, obviously. So, um, all right, armor. We're gonna upgrade as we usually do all our builds. We we try to go for you know max armor and performance mods, um, you know, in addition to the visual stuff. Okay, bumpers. Uh, so for this one, you want to go with the bolted stock. It's gonna be the closest to the real one there. Uh, rear bumpers. Now this one's a bit tricky uh, because I guess they had multiple cars as pretty much almost every movie does. They have multiple variants of the same car. They have one for stunts, one for um, you know less aggressive stunts for close-up shots and stuff like that. Um, and you can tell <laughs> the difference throughout the movie. In one scene, um, it has the overriders like you see here, but in another scene, it doesn't have them at all. It, it, it's, it's like they just removed them, but you can still see the hole is there in, underneath the bumper. Very weird. So, um, I think it was supposed to have the over... I don't even know at this point. I mean, I think it was supposed to have them. So, I guess you can either go with bolted stock or bolted stock with overriders. I guess you're, you're correct for either one of the two. So, I guess you can go with either one because they did make that mistake there. But I'm going to go with the one with the overriders. I think that's what it was meant to have. Uh, chassis, you're going to leave stock. Um, engine, I'm going to max that out. Why not? Now exhaust. Um, now in one scene you, you don't really see the exhaust, but then in another scene you do. So <laughs> another mistake there. Um, but uh, the real exhaust on the car, they were um, well the stock one. You can see it's a dual exit setup, two on either side. The car from the movie, it only had one exhaust pipe coming out of either side. So I guess you have two extra here. We don't have an option for just one. I guess you could go with the boxed exhaust, but again that's you know, more like a rectangular shape, not really the circular shape we want. So I guess the closest will be with stock in this case. Front fenders, stock, grill. So in here, you do have the performance grill, which is going to give you that look kind of similar to the 1972 Challenger, like the one from the movie. So that's awesome. You can go primary or secondary here. Now, here is the issue, something you have to keep in mind. Um, whatever you do up here, when it, in terms of primary and secondary, it also changes it back here. So if I go to secondary, you can see, boom, it changes. Primary also changes. Um, and the one from the movie, the back end around the taillights, you can, you can see it had that black section there. And I think that's a very important detail of the car. Um, however, the front end, it actually was primary color. And, and you can't, unfortunately, separate them. It just is what it is. It's forced. It's not like if you can go secondary for the back and primary for the front. It's it's forced. You have to go secondary for both or primary for both. Really annoying, but it just is what it is. And honestly, the headlight thing isn't too noticeable. So at least not as bad as the back. So I'm gonna go with the secondary here. Girl is looking good. Um, hood. So you have all the different options here. The closest one is going to be the twin intake hood. So we'll do that. 
lights are going to keep them stock um, even though these do have I mean they have a little bit of yellow in there but I think the be white light option or yellow from the arena war or LS Carmi is going to be a bit closer but uh, we'll leave stock for now a livery you're going to keep stock plates so the real car the plates was a white base with some red um, accents and I think the closest to that is going to be either a blue on white three or blue on white one really doesn't matter I'm gonna go on blue on white uh, uh, sorry blue on white two or blue on white three not blue on white one uh, I'm gonna stick with the blue on white two um, now the actual uh, plate text from the movie was 4t4 space q 8 b8 obviously it's not meant to mean anything in particular it's a very random plate but if you wanted to know what it was there you are if you want to be even more accurate to the movie um, however um, you know Rockstar still has their they haven't, they haven't made the website yet for the plates which they promised we still don't have that at the time of this recording so gonna have to stick with the generic text we have here rear fenders you have all these options here gonna keep that stock um, all right so in terms of the color um, it it's I mean it's just a plain white car so classic um, ice white to me is the closest uh, some people like to go with more like a faded white or so somewhere in between cream and ice white uh, but in reality I think the lighting of that movie because they really only showed the car for the most part um, I mean I guess there was the scene the first time we see the car in the daytime but um, most of the scenes are at night so I guess like, the lighting kind of makes it look different but to me classic ice white is gonna be close enough so we'll do that and the frost white is just too like on the has it like the grayish side it's too like an off white I think the ice white is perfect um, secondary color is going to be the grill that we did and also the roof which don't worry we're gonna be able to change that separately so we're gonna get to the roof here shortly um, we're gonna do matte black because the real car the back tail light area the surround was like a matte black so we'll do Making that to match accessible. okay now to trim color the interior was just black um, but I think the the actual black is a little bit too dark makes it look a bit less realistic so uh, I'm gonna go with the graphite there okay roof so here we go so the real car had a primary colored roof obviously and thankfully Rockstar actually gave us a primary roof option so perfect so we'll apply that and then we still have our secondary uh, tail lights around without having to do the black roof so perfect moving on to the side skirts so for this one you want to go with the primary custom skirt because the car didn't really have any skirt but I guess to hide it as best you can you want to go with the primary um, custom um, or you can go primary ridged but to me I think the uh, the primary custom hides it the best so we'll do that spoiler upgrade the car doesn't have any spoiler upgrades so you're gonna keep that stock as well a suspension the car pretty much sat at like stock right height so I mean I guess this is fine just leave it stock transmission we're gonna max out turbo we're gonna skip we, we don't want to have that turbo sound so we'll skip that wheels all right so for this one you want to hop over to the muscle category you want to scroll down to the wheel called El Jefe so these are the ones right here very very similar and then optional um, you can apply the tire design lettering even though um, it is it is kind of like in your face but the real car did have it but for some reason uh, like I said before with the different cars they use that the tire lettering looks different in other scenes and from different angles and different shots it, it's very weird but I guess same, same situation with the overriders I guess it was supposed to have the tire lettering so we'll put the tire lettering on there as well um, windows the cards did not have any tints so keep that stock and that's all the options there all right so that's how you do the builds for the um, nobody movie challenger let's go ahead and take it for a drive exit to ground does look pretty good kind of reminds me of like the vanishing point challenger but that one does have a few little options that are different uh, compared to the build we did here so keep that in mind I mean mainly the grill and the exhaust and stuff um, but very very cool car I've always loved the gauntlet classic it's such a fantastic car um, the interior is great it's not a generic muscle car interior we actually did put some effort into it 
um, and the exhaust note is great, and especially the startup. That's my favorite part of this car. Listen to this. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. It's a very similar startup sound, like from the Mamba and the uh, Frankenstein. So, very very cool. All right, floored here. Now this car is a bit sketchy to drive without the spoiler upgrading, because obviously in GTA with spoiler upgrade it gives you traction. Um, without the spoiler, this car is a bit weird to drive. It's very loose the back end, which I guess a muscle car should be, but you gotta be very careful, because if you force it slightly, this is what happens. <laughs> yeah, you gotta be very, very careful with this car. It's not uh, an easy one to drive with no spoiler. But um, it, it does sound great. It looks great. I'm just so happy we have this car in the game. This this is, I mean, a lot of people asking what's my favorite muscle car in the game, and honestly, it's this one. It's well, it's it's really close between this and the Hellfire. But honestly, I I probably go with this one. I, I think Rockstar just did it right with the upgrades, and they really did their research with the grills and stuff like that, and the hoods. Um, the liveries too. They did a really, really good job with this car, and the engine model too, which I'll show, I'll show here shortly. Um, but yeah, drives nice, great car. Now the Gauntlet Classic in general, it's not really that fast of a car be in comparison to you know other muscle cars in a class. It's around the pace of some of like the OG muscle cars, like the Buccaneer and stuff like that. But um, all right. Vehicle doors. Let's go here. Make sure you guys that engine bay. Boom. So here's the engine model. Now the engine model is also linked to your secondary color, which is a plus, but also kind of a negative depending on what type of um, look you're going for, because um, the situation with the grills. But uh, if you do the stock grill, it will default this back panel to being black, which I guess is good. Um, and then you're able to put your secondary color in like a hemi orange, for example, and then you have a hemi orange engine bay um, if you do the primary roof and all that. So that's a little trick there if you want to have a bit more of an accurate engine model, but very cool. Now in the movie, now that we're in the engine bay here on the topic, in the movie they call it a 4.9 liter V8, which makes absolutely no sense. There was never a 4.9 liter V8 made for the Challenger. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think it was supposed to be a 340, is what they were referencing, which would be, what, a 5.6, I think? 5.7, somewhere around there, if you can convert it to the uh, liters. But, um, supposedly, from what I've read, the, the one who made that comment on, you know, the, the, the size of the engine was the arrogant neighbor that had the car. So, th supposedly he's wrong and he was supposed to be wrong like he doesn't know much about the car supposedly I, I, I don't know take that as you wish uh, but overall awesome car I mean so much detail in here Rockstar did a fantastic job cars like this I mean they're the well-made ones are always worth it to me and I mean 600,000 even at its normal price I think it's very well worth it I mean imagine how much this car would cost if they were to add it in now, like in a newer DLC, it would definitely be over a million dollars, guaranteed. Guaranteed. But, um, anyways, guys, hope you enjoyed the build. Remember to let me know down below in the comments what movie slash TV show build you want to see me do next. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.